When you're working with Google Docs, it's often better to send your clients and collaborators a PDF export rather than sharing a direct link to the doc. What you may not realize is that you can use Zapier to automatically send a PDF of any Google Doc just by picking the right variable. Today, I'm going to show you how it all works. Hi, I'm Tom from X-Ray Tech, the workflow company. At X-Ray, we use automation providers like Zapier to help our members do more with the apps they use every day. If you'd like to learn more about X-Ray and our services, you can check out our website at xray.tech. To see more tips and tutorials every week, like this video and subscribe to our channel. And turn on those notifications to get alerts for every new upload. We've gotten several questions about sending Google Doc PDFs in Zapier, so we wanted to make this video covering the topic for anyone else who is curious. Just let us know in the comments below if there are any other workflows you'd like to see us explore on the channel. Whether it's Zapier, Make, Power Automate, or something else, all you have to do is ask. Now let's get started and send a Google Doc PDF with Zapier. First, you'll need to start with a Zap that includes either a Create Document step in Google Docs or a Find Document step in either Google Docs or Google Drive. To begin, I'll start with this zap that includes a create document step. In this example, a Google Doc is created whenever a record enters a specific view inside of Airtable. In any action that follows a create document step, you can access all sorts of data from the doc, including a PDF download link. You can send that PDF to any other app connected to Zapier. For instance, I want to add a new step to this automation that will use Gmail to send that link to the client. Let's do that now. And now I'll just quickly fill out the to and from fields. These fields aren't really important for this tutorial, so you can enter whatever you'd like. I'll just send the email to myself for testing. I'll also fill out a subject and body with some data pulled from step two. Again, you can write whatever you'd like here. Now I'll add the PDF in two spots, both the email body and the attachment field. Now, of course, that's not necessary for every situation. I just want to show you how it will work and how it looks in both spots. So let's actually click in the text field body and we see this insert data window pop up. These are variables from our previous steps. So let's search for PDF. And here we have a bunch of variables here from our second Google Docs action step. And if we scroll down just a little bit, we see this export links application PDF variable. This is what I want to use. So when I click on this variable, you see it inserted into the body of this email. Now, whenever we create a new Google Doc, this export links application PDF variable will be associated with that newly created doc and inserted into the email. Now you could make this body a HTML field instead of a plain text field. You would want to do that if you wanted to actually embed this URL into some specific text, like here is your proposal and you would be able to click on that link. You'll need to do that with an HTML body type, but for now, we'll just keep it as plain text. So now let's go down to the attachments field. The attachments field allows you to enter a actual file or a public URL, which will be downloaded and attached. So this export links application PDF link is exactly what we need for this field as well. So I'll search PDF yet again, scroll down and here it is, inserting that link in the attachment field. Now you don't need to do both, either one is fine. I'm just doing both to show you both options. Since not all apps support attachments in this way, it's important for you to know that there is a difference between the actual file and the public URL. In this case, we're using a public URL. So this Gmail step is all set. We can continue and test the step and see how it goes. So Zapier says that this email was sent. Let's check our inbox. And here it is. Marketing proposal for Incaptive. Let's open it up. We have the full Google Docs download URL along with the format of PDF. And you have two attachments here. The first attachment is the attachment that we configured in Zapier, where we're exporting a PDF and attaching it to the email. But the second attachment here is because Gmail reads your email, recognizes this as a Google Docs link, and dynamically adds it. What happens if I click this? Well, the download starts. And it's the same thing as clicking on this URL. When I click here, the download starts. So the export link variable will immediately start downloading the PDF to the computer, while the file PDF variable that we inserted as an attachment opens up like a traditional attachment. 
Everything looks good, but wouldn't it look a little better if we hyperlink text instead of pasting a link directly? Let's do that now. So back in Zapier, we're at that body type field again. We're going to switch this to HTML. And when we switch it to HTML, we're really going to need to rewrite everything in the body. So let's do that now. And there we are. Now the body is in HTML syntax where we're linking the export links application PDF variable to text called proposal PDF. Now we have all of this HTML in the resources board in the description of this video if you just want to quickly copy and paste it there. So with everything looking good, we're going to test this again. Retest step. And when we flip on over to our inbox, we have a new email with the proposal PDF hyperlinked right here. And when I click, the download starts. Perfect. Now there's one last thing I want to cover here. What is the actual file versus the file URL? So we've only been using file URLs so far, but to get the actual file, you need to use a find step as opposed to a create step. In Google Docs, we're creating a new file here, but let's use Google Drive and find that file. So let's do that now. And we're going to find it by the name of the file that we just created with Google Docs. We can leave everything else blank and continue. And when we test, we can see a lot of variables that look similar to what we saw from the create document step. However, there are several file variables, things like file PDF and file EPUB. These variables point to actual files rather than just links. You can tell that this is the case because it says hydrate here. That's Zapier's method for efficiently accessing files. When we go to our fourth step, the send email in Gmail action, and we go all the way down to our attachments, let's look for file again. We're going to ignore the variables from step two. And here we see file exists but not shown. This is the same kind of variable that we saw earlier. When you reference a file from a previous step, it will just say exists but not shown instead of showing the full hydrate value. I'll insert this file variable as an attachment. It doesn't specify the exact file type, but it should be some kind of doc file. I'm also going to attach a file that is definitively a PDF. So when I search file, you see that there's all of these variables. So let's use the file PDF and send both of these, both the file and the file in a PDF form. And let's see what happens. We're going to continue, retest again. And here it is. This first attachment is from the file variable and it's a word or docx file. The second attachment is a PDF from the file PDF variable. Both worked successfully, so this automation is all set. This distinction between the actual file versus the public URL is important because some apps will only accept one or the other. In some cases, you'll need the link. In other cases, you'll need the file itself. As you're building Zaps, if providing the link doesn't work, try providing the file itself or vice versa. Between the two, you should be able to get your Zaps working. With Zapier, it's easy to automatically get a PDF for a Google Doc and send it to anyone. Just pick the right variable from the list and you're good to go. If there are any other automation techniques or workflows you'd like us to cover on the channel, just leave a comment down below. Your suggestion could become one of our next videos. If you've enjoyed this video, prove you're human, like and subscribe for more automation tips every week. If you'd like to learn more about low-code automation and workflow design, follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, or Facebook, and you can find all of our content on our website at xray.tech. You can find all those links in the X-Ray Workflow Resources Board down below. And as always, find your focus and stay in flow. Trying to future-proof yourself? Start designing the way your team works with no-code tools, automation, and AI. In X-Ray's Workflow Designer course, we'll show you how to break down every part of a process to find the best opportunities for automation and how to integrate those automations into your team's daily work. You'll learn how to create time for your entire team, get more reliable results, and give everyone a newfound clarity and confidence in their work.
Just go to this URL to learn more. The entire package includes over two hours of premium video content, challenging example projects, and tons of helpful resources. The course costs just $250 and gives you lifetime access to a Slack community of workflow designers building systems in dozens of different industries. Space is limited, so join the free waiting list today to get notified as soon as the course is live later this year. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you soon in our workflow designer course.